Vulgar Fractions by C. J. Dennis. Read for LibriVox.org by Son of the Exiles. Vulgar Fractions. Now, when Bill the Pick and Shovel Man, or Archibald the Clerk, undertakes to sell the labour of a day, then for certain hours he works between the dawning and the dark, and delivers one day's work for one day's pay. This industrial arrangement has advantages for both, if employer and employed are honest men, and to doubt its simple justice I would be extremely loath, for no sophistry shall e'er pollute my pen. In referring to this matter I assume you have a taste for the stuff that sporting blokes regard as rot, such as politics, arithmetic, and economic waste. You're excused from reading farther if you've not. But arithmetic is boring to a certain type of man who is loath to strain his intellect too far, which reminds me opportunely of the modern party plan and the story of T. Trimmer, M.H.R. As a lad, young Thomas Trimmer longed to serve the common wheel, to devote to great reforms his manhood's prime. Oh, he yearned to serve his country with a patriotic zeal, and proposed to give the matter his whole time. You will note the youthful ardour his whole time, he said, no less, his whole time, no task or trouble would he shun. We shall call this whole a unit to avoid untidiness, and to represent it use the figure one. Therefore one denotes the labour that young Trimmer meant to give to his country as a maker of its laws. But he saw that if in politics he ever meant to live, it was wisdom to espouse some party cause. Wherefore, Thomas joined a party and became a party man. He secured the nomination later on, and he won in the election when he subsequently ran, which was excellent, so far as he had gone. Now when Thomas entered Parliament, he found that half his job was to keep himself before the public eye, and he had to make good running with the fickle-minded mob lest his party should disown him by and by. Thus we have a simple problem in subtraction, you will note. One minus a half must equal a half tis plain. But half his time to noble aims could Trimmer still devote, and so we have small reason to complain. But what with party meetings and no confidence debates, he depleted this small half by just two-thirds which was occupied in fanning party jealousies and hates with redundant and unprofitable words. Thus the first half plus two-thirds must give five-sixths in answer so, when five-sixths is given to the party cause. Of the whole there must remain, as any simpleton should know, just one-sixth to spend in framing splendid laws. But one-sixth of any busy politician's working day is as much as any country should expect. Yet Thomas found that, as the party game he had to play, there were other matters he could not neglect. Organising, engineering, and a dozen other things, of the sixth remaining claimed at least one-third, and a simple calculation to one-ninth the answer brings, which, to quote the famous Euclid, is absurd. Yet one whole ninth of Trimmer's time the grateful country gained, till he chanced to get unhappily involved, in a private row that claimed ten-seventeenths of what remained. But I think we'll let this problem go unsolved. Not because I couldn't do it, mathematics, I may say, are my hobby but for purposes of rhyme. From the ninth you merely have to take ten-seventeenths away, and, well, you can work it out when you have time. If you then deduct three-sevenths of the answer in the end, you will strike the final fraction more or less, for a fairly large proportion of his time he had to spend, keeping solid with the watchful party press. And of course there were occasions when the whole thing made him sick, and we might deduct one-tenth for that, no doubt. It's an entertaining problem if you like arithmetic, and I trust you'll find the time to work it out. I advise you to attempt it, for the simple sum I've set is a task an earnest student shouldn't shirk, and the answer is the portion that the glad electors get of a busy party politician's work. 
Trimmer ceased his calculations when the vulgar fractions failed, and he had to take to decimals instead. So, although his young resolve to serve the land has not prevailed, he's a solid party man, I've heard it said. Well, the plenitude of politicians in our native land is a matter frequently remarked upon. But assuming you're intelligent, the cause you'll understand, if you've followed me as far as I have gone. Let us make the fraction liberal, if one twentieth will say, of a statesman's day is ours, tis plain to see, that it takes just twenty statesmen to put in one working day for the country, still more Euclid, QED. I commend your patience, brother, if you've followed me thus far, and in metaphor I pat you on the back. Let me add in peroration that T. Trimmer, M.H.R., is quite typical of any party hack. Then perhaps you'll do some thinking when you hear a wordy storm of objection from the solid party man, when the themes elected ministries and similar reform, you can never, never change the party plan. For when Bill the pick and shovel man or Archibald the clerk sells his labour for a week at sixty bob, then he doesn't waste his boss's time and money like a narc in attempts to do the foreman for his job. This industrial arrangement, so much work for so much pay, seems to suit the ordinary working man. And we're yet to see the office or the workshop of today working smoothly on the good old party plan. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.